Hi, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Discussing Digital. Uh, and today I'm discussing digital with Dan Sager. Dan, would you like to introduce you, yourself and your business, uh, and also a bit about digital marketing to start with? Hey, absolutely, yeah. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for having me on. Much appreciated and good to see you, as always. So, yeah, of course, I'm a business coach, so I work one-to-one -one with business owners, uh, and we're looking across the whole business. So it's overall strategy on looking at where the business is now and where the owner wants to get it to. And then we look at a lot of the sales and marketing techniques, I guess, to try and get them exactly where they want to be. And I yeah, normally work for people with about 12 months. And of course, digital marketing is massively important to pretty much every business now, I would say. Cool. All right. And it'd be good to explore not only what the digital marketing that you do, but maybe some of the kind of ways that you try and help your clients to make the most of the opportunities that uh, digital marketing uh, sort of presents um, as, as part of your, your coaching work as well. So I think that'd be good to explore that. Um, to start with, just, uh, do you want to just talk a little bit about how you use digital marketing for on, on your side of the business? Yeah, sure. So in my own uh, business, I guess the biggest way is using emails. So I think emails is really, really powerful. Of course, everyone is using email pretty much, or at least they should be. Uh, but not a lot of people are doing it correctly, I would say. Yeah. All, all the big boys are using marketing. Uh, we're used to getting emails from, you know, all the national companies that we see on the high street and buy from online. But there's absolutely opportunity for much smaller businesses as well, I definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, do you want to expand a bit more into what you th what you think is um, the right way? Because I, I agree with you and uh, I'm a re initially going to put my hands up here. It's one of my weak areas at the moment. Yeah, I think it's super easy. There's two really easy rules to remember, I think, for email marketing in particular. It's make friends and help people. That's all you've got to do. I think emails shouldn't be salesy. Every now and then, of course, you will throw in an offer. But ultimately, I think email has to be there to make friends and help people. I think if you've got interesting, helpful, friendly, engaging emails that's providing value, I think that's really key to getting those open rates up higher and people clicking on your stuff and, and even replying back to you just to start a conversation because what you're sending is interesting and helpful. Yeah. What, so, so, so linked to that, um, what do you have a particular view on buying email lists and email contact lists? Do you think that's a, a strategy that, that always works, can work, should be avoided like the plague or somewhere in between? Okay. I've heard stories on both sides. I mean, you hear the horror st stories of people paying. I heard last week someone was paying uh, fifteen pounds per email address on a list of four hundred email addresses that they had bought. So obviously, an incredible investment uh, for what was is a small business. And when they started sending emails out, they had over seventy five percent of their emails bounce. Wow! And there was absolutely no comeback. So that's very extreme, of course, on one end. But then I have heard some other email. Uh, successes of course where people have bought a lot of emails for quite cheap and because they've been really specific in their target market or in their niche they have started to have some some success so i think it's all about doing the research into where the list has come from how up to date is that data um, and just really doing your research and i think it's good to, to get things like that recommended yeah yeah i think that's that's a really good good tip because uh, I don't know about you, but I'm always getting junk emails. Well, I, I just class them as junk of buy my data list and buy this. Uh, and I kind of go, no, I don't think I will. Because uh, <laughs> those, those ones just don't don't uh, fill me with uh, hope. In fact, fill me with dread. It's, it's the truth. Yeah. And that's the last thing you want, isn't it? I think if you can build up an email list from people that you know and people that you meet and people that interact with you online and do that organically, that list, although it will be smaller, I think that that group of people that are on there will be so much more engaged, and ultimately you'll get so much more from it. Yeah, yeah. And, and do you have any? I, I, that's absolutely absolutely right. Do you have any tips? One for how to grow your list, and two frequency of ma mailing to them. I think um, I think I try an email once a week. I think that's a good balance. Yeah. If there's something going on that in particular, uh, for example, there's two emails gone out this week. I think any more than that is potentially a bit too much. But again, I've had companies um, email, send you, see, you know, three, four times a week. And it, again, if you're making friends, helping people, you're not going to get a lot of unsubscribes. Again, slightly off topic, but I think you should be getting unsubscribes every week. I think that's healthy. It shows your list 
is active. Yeah. And as long as you are adding people to your list, then definitely, you know, it's good. And ultimately you need to, to go up. So I think the way that I add to my list is by meeting people. So I do a lot of networking and I put them into my database. And because the emails aren't harassing anyone, um, it's very, very rare that actually anyone unsubscribes from being on there. Yeah. No, I think it's, I think that's really, really good. And I do, I like your comment as well about it's healthy to get some unsubscribes um because yeah we we always everyone feels negative when anything like that happens and unsubscribe or somebody stops following you on social media but actually it does show that people have at least got some opinion they've been looking at it and, and have made a decision you know which is um which is good and as long as it's not too many you know and it's not too radical then uh, i think that's good stuff as well yeah no, i think that's, that's got that balance isn't it? as long yeah. as you've got more people going on the list than unsubscribing then you're yeah. on to a yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, sort of, I think we we um, sort of I can't remember, we just talked about social media and subscribing that. Um, I know you said sort of LinkedIn is your main platform. Do you want to talk a little bit about um, how and how and why? Uh, so how you use it and why you think it's been good for you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, with this coaching business, I'm actually not on Instagram or Facebook. Um, LinkedIn is 100% where my effort is, I think, because I'm a B2B business. Um, I think that's why that's why I use it because my target customer is on there, and I, that's when that's where everyone is. You know, if you meet people through what I'm doing, they're always on LinkedIn, so it's a, a chance to capture everybody. And I tend to post probably three times a week on LinkedIn. I've got my um, articles, my newsletter kind of thing on LinkedIn, which I'll do one long form article per week. And again, that, that's usually very similar or the same as my email newsletter, so it's reaching a different audience. And it's again make your friends, helping people. So for this week, this week for example, it was all about WhatsApp. How a business can use WhatsApp to um, help improve their business, get more sales, more referrals, that kind of thing. So it's all helpful content. There was no sales in there. And then another two posts a week will just be about what I'm up to. So if I've gone to an interesting event, if I'm running an interesting event, um, and all those kind of things. If I've met someone and I think there's going to be value from that conversation or something that's happened with a client, if I can put that out on LinkedIn. Hopefully, it will help other people. So, that's the, that's the main ways I use it. I guess by just trying to be helpful as always. Yeah, yeah, and it's it, it's it's interesting. One you said about you do different types different types of posts, but also different types of content. So you you know, and you and you're making good use of a lot of the different functions um, on LinkedIn because um, there are a lot of things there. Um, and I have to admit, so I'm I'm signed up to your to your kind of newsletter and stuff like that, and that that WhatsApp one was really good. Um, and uh, as you say, it's, it's interesting. A lot of people don't really think about how to use WhatsApp within their business. Um, but uh, yeah, you had some really good tips in in uh, um, in, in that uh, newsletter email that you um, or message. I think it was all of them in the end. <laughs> I, I think I might have seen it two or three ways. <laughs> But that's the thing, yeah. Some people like yourself, obviously, because we, we meet every week and see each other quite regularly, you are on both lists. But generally speaking, I think probably 95% of the people on each list are not on the other list. Yeah. So it's really interesting the engagement you get from both types of, of media, if you like. Yeah, yeah. And and, and uh, I think that's really true. And the other good thing I liked about what you just said is, you know, I'm on LinkedIn, but I'm not really on Facebook and, and Instagram for this for, for my business because I know where my clients are. And I think that's a that's a really um, good thing that you've actually worked out. You know what you're who you're who you're targeting, and where they hang out, and what the best platform uh, is. I mean, have you done much other experimentation with other platforms, and you just thought, no, that doesn't it doesn't work, or have you just kind of made that decision straight away and just focused on the one? LinkedIn was always where it started. I mean, I've always been on LinkedIn for about ten years, but only recently started to use it for this business. Um, and I have um, dabbled on TikTok as well. Um, I've actually not had much success with TikTok. I know other coaches that do what I do have had some really good success, and that was what kind of spurred me on to get going with TikTok. Um, but I've not had much success so far. Um, I've put quite a bit of content out there, again, along the same lines of trying to be useful and helpful. Uh, but the same video on LinkedIn and on TikTok, for me anyway so far, has actually always performed better on LinkedIn. So it's obviously a different audience on TikTok or for me and i've not quite found the right one yet uh, but it's really interesting to see the different types of content and how they perform across the different channels 
Yeah, yeah, funny. But I was, I, you, you nicely segued into this because obviously we were talking about that uh, before we started the recording. Um, and it is, it is interesting because you've put loads of what I would say good, good content. And when I started watching a few of your TikToks, I was expecting to see you know, good view figures. But actually, for whatever reason, you're not getting past that first tranche of the way TikTok kind of decides who to show it to. So, um, you know, it's interesting. So, so, and I also know we just had a chat about this, but I'll, I'll tee you up for it. So, so what, what, what's, your, what's your strategy now to try and um, get around that? And what, and what has it been? Because I think it's important that, that people hear this so that people know sometimes people get frustrated and it doesn't work. And this is what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So as a business coach, I'm not a TikTok coach. It is something that I've, <laughs> I have had to learn. And I've took a lot of advice from other people that have had success. Um, and I've kind of just gone back to the drawing board. So, yeah, for the last six weeks, I've had a complete TikTok hiatus. And uh, literally this week again now, I've started going back to the drawing board. I've done some more training videos kind of around TikTok. And I've started to formulate a bit of a plan now for the next few weeks. I think the main thing that I've learned is, obviously, I'm, I'm not planning to go viral. I don't need to go viral. It's not what my audience is um, and not what I need to do. But I think to get more people engaged and to reach more people, it seems to be all about the first five, ten seconds of the video and yeah. capture the person's interest because... Again, with it being so different to LinkedIn, people are just scrolling and scrolling. And if you don't hook them in um, in those first few seconds, obviously someone's they've just gone straight past, haven't they? So um, I think that's probably what I need to look at. Perhaps the start of the videos were maybe a little bit boring or, or something like that. And, yeah. yeah. And uh, but like I said, when I watched a few, I thought actually it's really good content. So it's just, it's, it is just weird. And I, I suspect, as you say, just a little tweak uh, in, in those first five, 10 seconds is probably and hopefully going to be be um, the solution to it. So uh, I look forward to 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 watching more of your videos in the, in the next couple of weeks and see if you can manage to uh, crack the code, uh, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, because I think when you're quite niche, niche, you don't need you know hundreds of thousands of followers. You know, I know other coaches that are not in the area that I am, but down the coast, and they've got less than two thousand followers each. And they've had some real success and they've taken on board multiple clients from TikTok, you know, from less than 2,000 followers. Yeah. Um, so it is all about quantity rather than quality. It's all about quality, I should say, <laughs> rather than quantity. Yeah. Um, like I was saying about the email list, you know, it's it's all the same thing, I think. And it, it does have a lot of common themes across the platform. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I completely agree with you there. And it's interesting as well, isn't it? Because I mean, again, before we were speaking, uh, we know somebody else who's actually had some, some a bit of success on TikTok. He's actually been a guest on a previous show. Uh, and it's interesting that he, he's actually used a little bit around the world around controversy uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as a as a topic. Um, and he's had a couple of um, sort of multi thousand viewing um TikToks, if that's I, I never know if that's the right term for one of those. Is it a TikTok? Is it a real? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> we know so, what you mean. Yeah. So uh, that might be um, something to to try throwing in at some point. Um, but if I was now you mentioned it, I just realised I, I was I've been listening to um, the um, Stephen Bartlett's uh, Diary of a CEO uh, as an audio audio book. Uh, and he was talking about um, Mr. Beast and and how his five second catches right at the start is is a, a, a way. Um, so yeah, it's, I think that's probably the probably the way to go. Just try and get that hook uh, in in those first five seconds. But um, I think he is uh, undoubtedly the master, isn't he, Mr. Beast? He's got that absolutely nailed. And but yeah, I think for his first few hundred videos, he didn't have probably much traction either. And it's just. Repeat, 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 and keep learning all the way through. Yeah, yeah. As uh, Edison said, isn't it? I've, it's not I failed. I've just found ten thousand ways not to work, not to work. Um, so yeah, just keep at it, which I think is really good. But as you say, you took the time out. You've kind of got over your frustration. Going to give it another go after sort of like doing a bit more research. So uh, I think that's really good, and I think that's something that's a really good piece of advice for anybody listening or watching this uh, as um, the way to go. Whatever you're doing, but particularly in the digital marketing world. Uh, he's, he's really yeah, yeah, okay. Um, obviously, sort of like the, the main other platform you have uh, is, is uh, your website. Um, do, do you have any particular 
um aims and objectives with that is it a brochure website are you trying to try, drive traffic to it or just kind of how do you see that as your dig as a digital asset for you so the, the websites for me is more of a reinforcement piece so when people meet me on, at an event whether it's online or in person or they see something on that i've done on linkedin i think the way it's obviously super important to have the website there behind everything kind of giving a full background on who i am what i do what i've done in the past it's kind of a reinforcing mechanism as well but in terms of like getting leads for myself i've also put a lot of kind of more useful content on there so i have um, quite a big resources page with about over 25 now i think different resources that would be really um, helpful and useful for business owners okay. of course that's who my my clients are they're all independent business owners yeah um, that content on there is all available to freely download oh okay well as you've mentioned it right because hopefully you know some of our, our our listeners and watchers will be interested in some of those do you want to talk a bit about, one about the, what resources you've got there but secondly what's your website address we will put it in the show notes and everything but as we just talked about it particularly if they want to find those resources do you know what the url is off the top of your head nothing like being put on the spot <laughs> yeah absolutely it's super easy it's 91d.co.uk d for dan 91d so it's super easy to find a uh, really nice short url uh, but yeah on there there's there's like i say all kinds of different things uh, a really good one is for anyone who's got a, an e-commerce website so there's a, a big checklist that you can print off and it highlights all the different things in all the different areas of your online shop that you should have to have a really high performing uh, e-commerce website oh cool all right well i'm definitely going to go and have a rummage around there after uh we finished this recording. That sounds really, really interesting. Uh, and yeah, definitely good. Um, and do people have to sign up to get to it or is it literally completely free? Um, there is a lead capture form on there. So it does, it does just capture a name and email address, but there's okay. no, obviously no payment. And once yeah. you do that, it's, it'll, it'll email it will email the document straight to you. So Brilliant. That's all okay. Happens. Well, I think that's, that's a, that's a fair exchange. Yeah. Yeah. If they're getting something useful, it's only fair to ask for an email. Address. Yeah. And they, and as you said, they'll just get onto your email list, which is also showing lots of useful stuff. So no, that's, that's a, that's a really good, good uh, practical way as well of, of, of helping build your, uh, um, your email list as well. So that's really good. Um, I was going to say a couple of things we sort of in the pre, discussion uh one of the things i asked you about was uh what is your most successful post um so can you remember that a bit about that and we just put the again we put the link in the show notes and stuff like that and and how do what why do you feel it was the most successful one yeah for sure so tiny bit of background a couple of well about two months ago now i was asked to speak at an event in lindhurst here in the new forest um, and that event was two or three weeks ago and the the summary of the event was six businesses came and pitched for the chance to win a thousand pounds so it was kind of a dragon's den style event with four local business owners um, on the panel and six new businesses all pitched themselves for the chance to win a thousand pounds to put towards their new business however they liked and they all talked about uh, what their business was doing uh, not only for themselves but around the wider community in the new forest um, if they were supporting any charities or any good causes or anything like that and there was six genuinely amazing businesses uh, that turned up. And I just did a LinkedIn post about the event because it was a really good day out. And I, I tagged everyone in there to try and give the all of the people that presented themselves a bit of exposure. And I spoke about Deborah, who is the lady who won. She set up a, an amazing business. Um, she's now a plasterer and a decorator. And okay. she's, you know, she's DBS checks and all that. And she really likes helping vulnerable people who perhaps don't like having tradesmen in the house typically. So she's got this amazing, quite inspiring business. And the post was all about that, basically. Yeah. And that's that's my best performing post. I think people like the story. They like the connections. They like the things that I was talking about that the, these local businesses were doing. And, and yeah, when I put all that together with some photographs, it, it did really well and got some amazing responses. Yeah. That's, I mean, I think that's really uh, fascinating that actually it's a story in the background. And that's part of the stuff that you kind of, uh feel as, as how it resonate and actually sort of driven traffic um and it kind of goes back to what you're saying about your three posts a week and the different styles that, that that are in them um and and it's yeah it's good to be able to kind of think about the style of the content that you're that you're looking to produce there i think people just love a story don't they if rather than saying this is how to do this even if you say this is how i do this or this is how my client does this um i think instantly people just 
are more likely to listen for at least a little bit longer anyway. You've obviously got to keep them interested throughout it. Yeah. I think. Yeah, no, I think I think I think that's really good. It's really fascinating. And, and it always amazes me what ends up being somebody's most successful post. Um and it's also quite interesting sometimes when I ask that question, because I get people going back, and go, well, how do you define success? So it's it's really interesting. I don't define I deliberately don't define it in the pre in the pre-show form to uh, see what people come up with. So uh, yeah, it's 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 always a good little talking point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um so sort of following on to that and sort of probably heading heading a bit towards the, the wrap up um the other thing i always ask my guests uh is to come up with two tips one for somebody who is a something that they really ought to be doing to make their digital marketing work uh, and the other one is just don't do this it's a disaster don't so so one to avoid um so start with what's your good tip i think just be be consistent but also be adaptive so like I was saying, with I guess with the TikTok, it's being consistent and being out there, but also be open to adapt. So look at what is working, look at what isn't working, um, and just adapt to that and to try and make something work. Because if you are consistent and you are providing value, I think ultimately you will succeed. And that can apply to almost anything, you know, not just the things that we talked about around mainly social media, but Facebook ads, Google ads as well. You know, these things do work for so, so many businesses. And it's why Meta and Google are two of the most valuable companies in the world. So just because it hasn't worked for you that way or how you've done it in the past, definitely don't write it off for how you might do it in the future. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really good. And what's on the on, on the link to that? What's the, what's the one bad thing to do? I think if you are going to put video and things about yourself out there online, if you are going to become a bit of your own personal brand, which I would recommend for many, many business owners to to do. I think you just have to be yourself and don't try and be something that you're not. So if you're not naturally confident in front of the camera, it is something that can be fixed. You know, there's plenty of people out there that can help with that. But if you're not yourself on camera, ultimately, I think people will see straight through that and it will only harm you in the long run. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I completely agree with you. Be yourself, but also yeah, try not to be a different persona on 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 uh video is such a good one to do and in, just from what you've you've answered that i realized one of the things we said that we talked about a little bit um at the start was actually in your role as a coach how you try and drive your clients t- to look at digital marketing and all we've done so far is talk about how you use digital marketing so um before we wrap up is there anything you just kind of like to cover off there and how how you think generically rather than you know this is what i do but this is where digital marketing fits when I'm working with a client. Because I think that would be interesting to see as a different side side to the conversation, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the quickest, easiest and cheapest thing people can do once you get over the free stuff is is to look at retargeting. Mm -hmm. You know, retargeting people that have already been to your website and then for whatever reason that have left. If you can, you know, follow those people around the internet and re-advertise to those people um, it is the, some of the cheapest clicks that you can buy, and it's also some of the highest converting. And I think so many businesses don't realise that it's an option for them always. They don't know how to do it. They think it's too complicated or too expensive. And I promise, as I'm sure you know, it's none of those things, and it's it's overlooked by far too many people. And it's not even too difficult to, to set up and do yourself because once it is set up and working, it kind of looks after itself a lot of the time. Yeah, uh, I really would encourage more people to look at that as an option. Yeah, and it's it, and you know when you've done it, or when or when you've been to a business that does do it, because suddenly their information is appearing either on different websites or on Facebook or something like that. When you think, why? Yeah, you know, I was only talking about this, or only, and it it, it it's it, as you say, it's fascinating the the impact it has. That back of mind thinking, isn't it? And it makes you look a lot bigger than you might be as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, th- I think that's a, that's a really, really good tip um, on top of the two that you're already given. Uh, um, so uh, so you you find that one's quite a good one that you, you uh, recommend to a lot of your clients? Absolutely, yeah, that's, that's part of the foundation blocks that I'll go through with with pretty much every client. We'll try and set that up before we, before we go looking at putting new marketing out there and trying to get lots more leads in. We've got to make sure we're making the most of the leads that we've already got and are getting. And I think that's such a good way to do it. So, yeah, it's absolutely part of the the foundation blocks with all my clients. 
Ah, oh, brilliant. Fantastic. It's almost like you're giving us an extra bonus tip for uh, <laughs> everything that uh, that, that uh, you'd already given. Um, so to, to wrap up, if any of our watchers or listeners um, are interested in getting in contact with you because they want to engage with you as a business coach, um, what's the best way for them to uh, get in contact with you? So we will share all your links uh, in the show notes, but what's the best way to get in contact with you? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, feel free to look me up on LinkedIn and send a connection request. I'll always accept those. Um, or head to the website. You can book in a virtual coffee there. So the button's on every page and we can book a half an hour chat with me. If we're local, we'll even, we can do that in person as well. Uh, I love chatting to new business owners. Uh, and even if they don't ultimately become a, quiet, a client, I'm more than happy just to chat people and, and try and help them ultimately because that's what I'm here for. So yeah, super easy. Just head to the website. Excellent. That's brilliant. Uh, so it just uh, remains for me to say thank you so much for being a guest on the show today and sharing uh, all those uh, hints and tips that you've done. It's much appreciated. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. Brilliant. Cool. Excellent. Mm-hmm.